Hello guys and welcome to another episode about flying physics. Today we'll be dealing with the theoretical calculation of uh, the runway length that an aircraft actually needs in order to take off and uh, all the factors involved in this situation affecting that length. Uh, with the term of course runway length I mean the physical length of the runway for uh, the takeoff roll only. So uh, we'll start by sketching the aircraft. waiting for departure clearance the aircraft when it's about to take off and the aircraft in an intermediate position while this is its x-axis and this is its y-axis so the force acting on the aircraft are its weight, having gained some speed, its lift, the vertical reaction from the ground, it's still on the ground, of course thrust, drag, and friction from the ground. So, I will start by writing the equations of motion for the aircraft. First of all, on the vertical axis, where the aircraft is in equilibrium, we have lift plus the vertical reaction from ground, which equals to weight. So, that vertical reaction is actually weight minus lift on the horizontal axis the aircraft is accelerating so what are the forces in the horizontal axis is thrust minus drag minus the friction with the ground and all these create the acceleration of the aircraft so as we can see the equation contains forces that, uh, that are not constant with time therefore the acceleration also will not be constant with time the forces are the thrust which depends on the air density this is the mass flow and uh, the velocity the speed of the exhaust gases minus the velocity of the aircraft so it's not constant then we have the drag, which drag? Since the aircraft doesn't create uh, too much lift during the takeoff roll, this is parasite drag due to the motion of the airplane into the air, which equals to half air density squared speed coefficient of parasite drag and the surface of the wings. Finally, the friction, which is coefficient of friction minus lift so as we can see the forces depend on the the speed of the aircraft and uh, thrust is decreasing, parasite drag is increasing and friction is decreasing. So the forces are not constant, the acceleration will not be constant and we, if we rewrite this equation we have that the thrust which 
depends on this aircraft of the speed minus drag which also depends on the aircraft of the speed minus the friction which also depends on the aircraft squared the speed and all this this is the mass multiplied by the acceleration. This is a uh, differential, differential equation and uh, in order to solve uh, uh, the equation we need to remember the university mathematics or use a uh, specified software. But in order to simplify the situation I'll make some assumptions that could be realistic under certain circumstances. A. I assume that the thrust is more or less constant during the takeoff. And B. I will assume that the sum of the forces of the resistance, the power side drag and the force, is also constant. With these two assumptions, the aircraft acceleration will also be constant and we can calculate it either from the constant uh, acceleration motion formulas or from uh, work energy theorem, but let's see where are those assumptions are based. The thrust during the takeoff roll as a slight decrease and then increases. The aerodynamic drag increases with speed and the friction is decreasing. But the sum of those two forces we can uh, say that it's almost constant. So, this is the excess thrust. So, if we assume that the thrust is constant and the sum of, those, of these forces is constant, then the first part of this equation, which is the, sum of the, the total sum of the forces, is also constant. So, the acceleration in the second part will also be constant and we can calculate it from, of course, the second uh, law of Newton. So, from the constant acceleration motion formulas, we have the initial speed of the aircraft is zero, that's the aircraft. Uh, is not moving. We have a constant acceleration so the velocity of the aircraft, the speed of the aircraft at any time it's uh, the acceleration multiplied by the time passed and of course distance traveled is this So from these two, we have that the distance traveled by the airplane is speed squared, the final speed squared, divided by a uh, double of acceleration the aircraft has. I'll keep that and in order to make the calculations easier, I will make a couple more of assumptions. First of all, the thrust is constant, the sum of uh, drag and friction is constant, and about its uh, relationship we can also make one assumption. Let's remember this formula. So, the thrust is constant, 
drag plus friction is also constant but the assumption we can make from here is that the sum of the resistance forces it's about 10% of the thrust during the takeoff roll so if this is true then the total force acting on the airplane during the takeoff roll on the horizontal axis will be about 90% of the thrust so we have a loss of 10% secondly the final speed that the aircraft starts to climb is approximately 20% above stall speed therefore but the stall speed is two times the aircraft weight therefore the length x will be So if we do the calculations, we can have What does this mean? That the length uh, required for the aircraft to take off, x, is proportional to the squared mass of the aircraft inversely proportional to uh, air density maximum coefficient of lift and thrust but thrust is also depends on the air density I will write that here and as we know coefficient of uh, lift and the surface of the wing can be increased with extending flaps during takeoff but uh, not too much because they can have a very big drag penalty So in that way, we can affect the distance x, first of all with those two, but there is an optimum setting for the flaps, because before and after that, the distance increases. Additionally, the wind uh, affects also the length x because the speed in uh, all these equations is ground speed but ground speed is the true air speed plus or minus the wind speed so let's say for example that we have headwind in that case
the ground speed will be the true air speed minus the wind speed and we said that this is the ground speed of the aircraft so we can see that uh, with a headwind the ground speed decreases for the, for the same true airspeed and of course uh, indicated airspeed and uh, the length x is also less finally the slope of the runway plays a role because adds a weight component on the equation uh, if for example we have an uphill a runway uphill then As the aircraft tries to accelerate, it will be more difficult. I will sketch it in the intermediate position. In that way, the weight vector is tilted. Let's say that the slope has an angle of theta. So we will analyze the weight in two components, x and y, and in the vertical axis the aircraft is, is uh, still in equilibrium. So we have that the vertical reaction from the ground is vertical component of the weight minus the lift but the vertical component of the weight this is the same angle is uh, that and of course in horizontal axis we have that thrust minus drag minus uh, friction minus the horizontal component of the weight will be equal to mass acceleration and of course the friction is coefficient of friction multiplied by vertical reaction which is this. So, in that case, the, the total force in the uh, x-axis is reduced due to the horizontal uh, component of the weight, so the aircraft uh, acceleration will be reduced, so the required length for takeoff will be increased. Of course, all this uh, information is concentrated on uh, performance charts for uh, any aircraft type, so we don't have to, to do any calculations by the hand, but uh, that was just a video for, uh, for analyzing uh, in which factors uh, the, the aircraft take of all distance uh, depends, and to have a better understanding of the physics behind that. So, thank you very much for watching, see you next time, bye bye!